G'day world, my name's Dave and I'm here to talk to you today in the TED format to try and share some ideas that hopefully can uh, save some lives around the world. And the topic is um, how to prevent drowning using wearable flotation. Right? Now, firstly, I need to explain why wearable flotation is important. For every kilo or every kilo of buoyancy that a person has on them while they're in the water, when they can't touch the bottom of course, is about 40 millimetres for every kilo. So, you know, if someone had four kilos of buoyancy on them, that's 120 millimetres. If they had five kilos of buoyancy, that's um, five fours of 20. What are we talking here? 200 millimetres of extra buoyancy. That just means the height of where their head would be if they were trying to tread water. And it depends, different people, depending on their, you know, endurance, how well they can tread water. So I'll just bring in, since this is a TED talk, I'll just bring in my mate Ted. Now, and here's some water. Now, if Ted here was going for a swim, and let's just say he was treading water here, so he's getting a bit tired, and uh, yeah, he's slipping, right? So if he had an extra one kilo of buoyancy, that's an extra 40 millimetres or inch and a half. Whereas if you had like two kilos or three kilos, obviously the more you have the better. But I mean, the, the, the challenge here is to try and find a way to make buoyancy into products that people will buy. Because obviously with life jackets, you're better off with a life jacket if you're in a scenario where you need a life jacket, like uh, in a boat or doing rock fishing and things like that. But um, obviously in leisure activities, the problem is that people don't wear one when they should. And the thing is we need to make products, we need product designers to help make products that people will buy and um, then the shops will st sell it and um, you know, we'll be saving people from drowning. Now, to, to explain what sort of uh, numbers we're talking about, in Australia about 300 people a year drown. Now, about 600 people almost drown, but get taken to hospital and, it, and have to recover. And each one of those people, those 600 people that get taken to hospital is near fatal drowning, it costs on average per person $400,000. And the source of that information is a Surf Life Saving Australia website, $400,000 per person near fatal the ones that recover and of that a percentage of those don't fully recover and they become like permanently disabled and then it needs to allocate like a permanent carer which sometimes the parent is um you know the full-time carer forever so i'm trying to liberate all of that so over the next 20 years i estimate that if these ideas are shared and um, implemented as i'm trying to suggest here the potential is there to save 100,000 lives worldwide over the next 20 years, which is about 14 people per day worldwide for the next 20 years, or one person per day in Australia over the next 20 years. So that's a lot of people. So here we have, like everyone knows what a camel pack is, so I assume people, anyone into sport. And if you go for a paddle or a canoe or a pretty long one or a big long walk or something like that you'll have your camel pack and these now come up to three litres of water you can carry in and this is an old one only got about two litres in it but um these could be remanufactured obviously redesigned it would need to be now in the case you're in a water environment where you um you prioritize air over water obviously because people can live uh, three days without water whereas you can only live three minutes without air so when obviously it's a um, little bit more of an important topic now obviously this valve isn't the right sort of valve for this to be holding air but if it was remanufactured something like this could potentially do both it could have a bit of air in it which would weigh nothing so it wouldn't inhibit anyone going for a hike or you know anyone doing canoeing because obviously only the water content would weigh anything so I mean if this this could actually have both air and water and um, that's one of the ideas that I've got but I mean I've got a few other ideas now let's just say you get your inner MacGyver going and you, you know you got some duct tape everybody knows how good that is because it can pretty much fix anything and everyone's sort of got a waste bottle this is like 750 ml bottle instead of that just going into the dump that 750 mils once that's fully capped tight it gives about 750 grams of buoyancy 
and 750 grams of buoyancy equates to about 30 millimeters of buoyancy when you're treating water. So if you, you know, a lot of people, these are out of fashion now, these bum bag things. This is an old one that I've had for yonks. But I mean, two of these would fit in that old bum bag, right? Now, if that went round your waist as a, um, you know, say if you're canoeing or whatever, or if you're going for a swim, it probably wouldn't inhibit you too much. But I mean, you'd have a, a, a kilo and a half there of buoyancy, which would be the equivalent of about 60 millimetres of buoyancy. And like I was trying to show you here before with Ted, 60 millimetres of buoyancy can be the difference between being able to breathe and not being able to breathe. And you know, if you can only last three minutes without air, I mean, everybody can go for a swim and surf and you just get three minutes of really bad waves that come in and can, Im see, it's supposed to be a Ted talk, but Ted is actually talking. <laughs> it's one of talking Teddy. But, um, so, obviously there's other ways of achieving that. You could get like a sock or something like that. You could put that inside a sock or an old shirt sleeve or something like that and you could sew it up with a bit of, you know, canvas thread. And if you didn't have the money, you didn't have the shop, there's no shops there to buy buoyancy for you to wear safely on your little, you might only be going for a holiday for a couple of weeks and you think, shit, oh, why would I buy all this stuff? Well, you can make it, okay? You just get your inner MacGyver going with um, your duct tape and um, you know your thread and some bottles of this and you can sew something up, whatever it is that you seem to think that you need to be safe or for the people that under your care that you're looking after and you can keep them safe around the rivers and lakes and um, you know the beaches and whatever it is you're up to. Now the other thing that I want to discuss is um, there's other types of buoyancy that exist like wetsuits. Now in regard to wetsuits um, people that go for so do the triathlons right that, that's a popular sport nowadays and people sometimes can do a, a swim up to around four kilometres now, some of those people can do a four kilometre swim that otherwise might not be able to do it without their wetsuit on. And they can wear their full length wetsuit. Which if it was a three millimetre wetsuit, that would have about four kilos of buoyancy in it. Now, that means that if they get stuck halfway, two kilometres through the race, they can have a bit of a rest. And instead of trying to tread water where they'd be up to here, they're treading water about here because they've got another four times 40, which is 160 millimetres of buoyancy on them. Now, this is just a pair of, pair of wet, shirt, wet shorts, which is just made of neoprene, which is closed cell rubber, closed cell foam rubber. And they would roughly, on an adult size, would have about 700 grams of buoyancy, which would be about the same as a 750, 750 bottle. Now, um, other types of buoyancy people can have, but obviously it's not wearable. This is, this is just a noodle. There's something like this is a pool noodle. But these are a hollow one. So something like this would have about four kilos of buoyancy in it. Now these are only like two bucks at Kmart. So if you're going camping or something like that, um, maybe, you know, people or whatever you're up to, you know, you could um, sew, this, sew some of these bits into a sock or whatever or into a sleeve or into an old shirt or something like that. There's things, ways that you could do it so that you could go and have your weekend of fun and make sure you come back safely. Now, the other part of the thing that I want to talk about is um, product designers, because product people follow fads. Like, I mean, chicks never used to wear active wear. Now active wear is like the thing that everyone's wearing, you know? But um, what we need is product designers to think of a new way to, um, to implement wearable flotation. That's basically what we're looking for. So, here, that's, um, that's a type of swimsuit or something that people could invent. And you can see there, you know, on the legs and that, they could have a bit of flotation on the legs, a bit on the arms, a bit on the Katy Perry bust stuff. And you could make something that looked pretty darn good and you could put all your flotation in it. But obviously I'm not a product designer and I don't know how to uh, sew up that sort of stuff. But um, another way is like I was showing you with the shorts is you could have, um, you know, a bit of buoyancy in the booty there. And, um, you know, if anyone said it, you know, asked if you, you know, your bum looked big in that, you could say, well, look, I'm just wearing my uh, flotation, you know. And uh, so that's that. Now, the other thing I just want to mention is that I've emailed all the government. 
and I've explained all these things what I'm explaining to you now. I've done all this in an email. I've sent it all out to uh, my local MPs, my Mudrabar, Ros Bates, um, member for the Gold Coast here, in McPherson, Karen Andrews, and um, I've even e emailed the Prime Minister Scott Morrison, and I've also emailed um, the Health Minister Greg Hunt, and I actually got a message or a letter back from via Greg Hunt only just the other day, a couple of days ago, from the Minister of Sport, Bridget McKenzie. Now they're sort of thanking me for my concern and. Um, all of the information that I've put forward and they've just suggested that maybe I could get some business assistance via the, you know, the government business assistance. And also I was also put on to um, other departments for maybe getting a grant or something to develop these things. But the thing is I'm a house builder, right? Put it in respect perspective. I'm not a product designer. I'm not a swimwear maker. I don't know how to make this stuff. I mean, if you ask me to make you something, sure, I can make it with, you know, a bit of MacGyver sticky tape and um, make you up something that'll make you float. But I mean, it's not, you're gonna look a bit silly going down the beach wearing something that I made you. So it comes down to whether we can encourage uh, the government or anybody or private corporation who says, wow, this is a new idea. Because I mean, let's face it, you know, swimwear as we know it, swimwear, you know, it's like, here, here's, a, here's a bikini. It's just like a bit of, um, you know, dental floss I mean that's the sort of stuff and they're calling that swimwear right but in reality it's not really seaworthy I mean the thing is you can't say that that's seaworthy I mean years ago I think the king of um, Sweden a thousand years ago or something like that he wanted a boat and he wanted a ship and he wanted um, you know cannons all over it he said he wanted the whole top deck to be full of cannons and I think he asked the shipbuilder, said, can you make it? They said, oh, no, it'll sink. So he just sorted them through the stomach and said, anyone else think they can't make it? So they, of course, they all agreed and they made the ship full of cannons. And what do you think happened as soon as they launched it? They launched it and it just tipped over and sunk because they didn't understand the difference between what's seaworthy and what's not fit seaworthy. They didn't understand the physics and the maths of flotation right as well as they should have obviously that's evolved since then um hopefully the titanic 2 is a bit better than titanic 1 but i mean all i can tell you from the maths and physics of it is i'm pretty sure that one kilo of flotation on an adult will give you 40 millimeters of extra buoyancy right that's just for one kilo so the more the better and like a, uh, a life jacket has got, is, or the, the lowest grade life jacket is rated as 50A. I don't know why they do it in that, which apparently means 50 newtons. And that translated into English means five kilos of buoyancy. Okay, now five kilos of buoyancy, like I said, is around about the same as this pool noodle. It's four, four kilos of noodle. But you know, there's a warning on here saying that, hey, this isn't. Um, you know, this isn't approved, da da da. So, I mean, obviously, we've got to be realistic. Anything that you make, it isn't approved. You've got to be realised it just, all it's going to do is just assist you a little bit with, um, you know, with your um, flotation to have a bit of fun down the beach or in the river or lake. Now, um, yeah, so basically, I've covered all that. What else do I want to talk about? I just basically want this shared. I mean, things like I said, this is a serious topic. If we can actually get this shared around the world, you know, there is the potential if there's other collaborations with other people, if you know, we get a lot of corporate support behind this, um, there's the potential to save 100,000 lives over the next 20 years worldwide, which is about 14 lives per day. So this video that I'm doing right here today has the potential to save one life per day in Australia from now on and it has the potential to save 14 lives per day forever worldwide. That's if these ideas are shared and implemented. I just hope that I get a better response, uh, sorry, get a better response from the government and from the MPs of what I've had so far. And um, so there you go. Here I am, like I said, I'm on Gold Coast, Australia. This is where I am, this is where I live. Another thing I just wanted to mention before I go is just in, just in uh, January, 
on the Gold Coast here at 2019 in January. I rung the local council because I wanted to know how many people were rescued in that month of January. Now the answer is 485 people were rescued on the Gold Coast beaches just in January. And that's just on the Gold Coast and that's just 2019, one month, right? Now, we've got fantastic um, lifeguards and obviously the best um, ambulance and uh, emergency services in the world, bar none. And uh, if it wasn't for those people, you would think that of those 485 people that were rescued, it's a good chance that maybe maybe 100 of them might not have made it back to shore, you know? So there you go, just one month. So, I mean, and yet nobody's talking about it. I'm the only person who's doing this in the world, as far as I know, who's actually, so that's why I'm doing it. So now you know why I'm doing it, because um, no one seems to be doing anything about it. There's going to be an Australian record this year for the amount of people that have drowned in one year um, under Scott Morrison. I'm not saying that it's Scott Morrison's fault. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, they've just had the budget and got plenty of coin there to play with. They just probably haven't had the chance to look at it and um, haven't had the chance to get back to me with um, and tell me what they're actually going to do about it. And even um, if there's any other corporate people who want to think of a good product, I'll tell you now. You know, there's only there's so many companies out there making swimwear, right? But they're calling swimwear what they should be calling it is sunwear, because if you're going to wear, let's just say, what I was talking about with the bikini, which is more like a bit of um dental floss obviously the objective of that is you know to look sexy and get a good suntan all over but it's not particularly seaworthy you know costume whereas a product designer could say okay i've just dot i've just isolated a new market now we can split swimwear into two categories we can split it into sunwear which is obviously all fashion on the beach and stuff, stuff and then swimwear where you say oh no this is actually for swimming now you've got a completely different product and new product range. We can create a new trend and save people's lives at the same time. So let's just hope that um, this does get shared and uh, we get a worldwide response and ho hopefully a government response in Australia here. And um, yeah, so um, there you go. My name's Dave Allen and uh, this talk was about preventing drowning using uh, wearable flotation. So hopefully uh, hopefully we get some action on this and um, see you later world. Hopefully I hear from some people and um, you know, if you're ever on the Gold Coast, look me up, I'll let you buy me a beer anytime. All right, cheers, cheers from the Gold Coast. Take care and see you later.